So this is the moment of the two explosions. Let's rewind this videotape and go back to the top of it so we can see it again. We're seeing this for the very first time. This has just come into the newsroom. Video of the two explosions themselves. Now here the blast has, has just occurred, the first one. And we're told that 15 seconds later there's a second blast. Runners still headed for the finish line. And there's the second explosion down the street. It looks like it's about a block or so down the street from the first explosion. This is the finish line of the Boston Marathon. There have been a large number of casualties. We do not know about deaths, but many people have been injured and apparently some of them gravely. This is the videotape of the first moments after the large explosion that we saw on the sidewalk there. This is a very short little clip of videotape that we have that shows the actual explosion. There it was, right there at the finish line. One of the runners you see went down immediately in the middle of the street at the moment of the explosion. But let's go back to the videotape that we saw just a moment ago that captures both explosions because we see two explosions separated by about 15 seconds and separated by about a block, it looks like to me. That's the first explosion. Now as the camera begins to pan to the left, look down the block, and there is the smoke from a second explosion down the block, maybe, maybe a block further down Boylston Street uh, from the finish line. So, witnesses described two explosions, and we have now seen them both, apparently separated by about 15 seconds and by about a block. We do not know what has caused these explosions. We have uh, one of our reporters, Ken Tucci from WBZ, on the telephone. Ken, what can you tell us? Uh, well, Scott, I can tell you that um, we were uh, set up uh, to do our coverage of the Boston Marathon, so some of our people were there. Uh, at the finish line, um, I was uh, a little 100 yards or so away when we heard the first explosion, and of course a lot of us kind of went in that direction. Um, and what we saw was uh, damage and then a lot of injuries in front of a store called uh, Marathon Sports, uh, ironically, which is directly across the street from the Boston Public Library, which is where the finish line is. So something either occurred outside or inside that store. We believe it was outside, but we're not quite sure. Um, but there were a lot of people injured, um, many people being taken away on stretchers, a lot of um, laceration injuries, um, and probably worse, so I'm not a medical person on that one. Um, the good news, if there is any, is that there is a very extensive medical tent set up just beyond the finish line here to take care of any uh, injured runners who come across. And, and the people who work in that medical tent uh, are trained, uh, many of them, in emergency medicine. And they, of course, responded immediately. Uh, and there are were, there were plenty of police and other emergency personnel here anyway. So they, they got to the injured very, very quickly and um, pulled them out of there as quickly as they could, triage them, got them onto stretchers, either into the medical tents or onto ambulances, which were also in the area. Um, so uh, they were able to get to the people quickly. Uh, the scene in front of that one first explosion was just the, the barricades that are set up to uh, sort of have people behind them were all blown out, and, and then they were just, uh, I'm afraid there were a lot of people on the ground. The second explosion, as you indicated earlier, was maybe 15 seconds or so later, uh, further on uh, up Boylston Street. Um, we didn't, haven't seen that one. Uh, I haven't seen that one from, from a personal vantage point, but it happened very quickly after the after the first one, which uh, I think has to make the authorities wonder uh, and, and think the worst on that. Scott? Thank you very much. Uh, Major Garrett, uh, our chief White House correspondent, is at the White House this afternoon. We do not know the cause of these explosions, but I understand that the president has been informed. Major? That's right, Scott. President Obama was notified. A White House official tells us we don't know precisely when the president was notified or who did the notification, but the president has been notified. He's monitoring the situation, and he has ordered everyone in the federal government to be in contact with the relevant state and local authorities. That's very common practice in emergency situations like this. And, of course, 
The president has told those state and local officials the federal government will provide whatever assistance it can and that is requested. One note, Scott, the president has a different counterterrorism advisor inside the White House. Lisa Monaco joined the White House somewhat recently after John Brennan, who was the president's former counterterrorism advisor within the White House, was confirmed as the new CIA director. So the president has a slightly new team dealing with these issues. But again, it's worth pointing out, as we have said many times, there is no absolute proof this is a terrorist situation. It is an emergency situation. The president's notified and is monitoring. Major Garrett at the White House. Major, thank you very much.